Indonesia. With long white sand beaches, ancient rainforest jungles and more than 17,000 volcanic islands, this Southeast Asian nation is a unique and diverse tropical paradise. The island of Bali, the Komodo National Park and the Krakatau volcano might be places you've heard of. But Indonesia also has a rich culture that goes back thousands of years. And here, on an island named Flores, an ancient legend speaks of a mysterious wild grandmother of the forest. The Ibu Gogo. According to folklore, such tiny hairy people as her once roamed the forest alongside modern humans. For decades, this tale was viewed as just a myth. The legend, however, became viewed in an entirely new light when the remains of an equally small, previously unknown species of human relative was discovered deep in a cave on the very same island. Hi there and welcome to the woods. Maybe you've heard about this uh, this uh, Homo florensiensis before. Uh, it's also called uh, the Hobbit due to its small small size. And this uh, species was discovered in 2003 in the Ling Liang Bua cave on the island of Flores uh, in Indonesia. Adding to this mystery is that <clears throat> it is now thought that the ancestors of Homo florensiensis in, um, in the Indonesia arrived at Flores about uh, 800,000 years ago in the form of Homo erectus. So what happened was that when uh, the Homo erectus reached the islands of Indonesia 800,000 years ago, they... Uh, they started to, to shrink, which, uh, which is what happens when a population is isolated. Uh, if you look at any kind of animal, when you have isolated populations, then the evolutionary pressure tend to shrink the size of the animals. And that is what happened to, to uh, Homo florensiensis. So um, that explains the small stature of the discovery in the Liang Bua cave. Because of the nine individuals discovered there of Homo florensiensis, they were about 1.1 meters tall. Very small. But what is especially interesting here, I think, is that if, um, if you look at the brain size of, of this um, these individual individuals that have been found the brain size is about 40 percent no sorry 30 percent of that of a human of, of a more modern human 30 percent the size of a modern human and if you look at the brain size of a homo erectus the homo florensis brain is about 40 percent the size of homo erectus
their brain must have shrunk, their brain shrunk to a smaller size. Was they able to retain all their skills, their cognitive skills, their intelligence, all the traits from the Homo erectus? In this cave, it has also been found burnt pebbles and burnt stones of uh, an elephant, an extinct elephant called Stegodon, an elephant uh, relative called Stegodon, burnt bones. So it seems that somehow even if the brain shrank and even if we don't know if Homo erectus was able to make fire, it seems very very likely that also Homo floresiensis with its much smaller brain was able to, to make fire. Because, um, I mean, it's not natural fires in a cave in a tropical rainforest. And, I mean, eating raw elephant meat, I don't think it's uh, very tasty or <laughs> probable that they, they ate it raw. And, and along in this cave with the, with the remains were also found thousands of stone tools in a size that um, is suitable for this small human species. And if you think that um, if you think that flint napping and making stone tools is something primitive and uh, just just banging two two stones together, um, I advise you to. Um, To look at how flint napping is actually made. I feel like I've waited my whole life for this piece of stone to come through my hands. Like, Hello, baby. I put a link here to. Uh, person here on YouTube, a channel called uh, Will Lord Prehistoric Survival and he is a, a flint napper and he can show you the very very advanced craft of uh, napping flint tools. <clears throat> when you go that far back in time, 50,000 years, then you basically have two, you have two options for making fire, two technologies and that is <clears throat> friction fire with wood, either just uh, using your hands or using, um, uh, using a bow. Or you have the option of stone against stone and some kind of, some kind of tinder. This friction fire is a little less advanced uh, method. You need to know the kind of the kind of wood to use, but is it more available than finding marcasite? Marcasite, which this is, which is a I would say is a rare uh, kind of stone, and flint. Uh, that is more more advanced, I think, than than using friction fire. So I'm, I'm pretty confident to say that Homo floresiensis used uh, friction fire when they started their, their fire in the caves. So is there any truth behind the legend of the Ibgogo people in Indonesia? Well, if you look uh, around you in other cultures, stories about small creatures in the woods are not uncommon. If you look here in the Nordic countries, for example, we have the stories about the, uh, the small gnomes in the woods. And uh, this is also a myth, a legend. But still, when you find remains of a new homid species measuring 1.1 meters in length, did they survive later than the remains find here in the cave? It tickles your mind. The Nage people of Flores describes the Ibugogo as having been able walkers and fast runners, about five feet tall. 
They reportedly had wide noses, broad faces, large mouths and hairy bodies. They were said to have their own language and could repeat what was said to them. As late as of the 18th century, according to the legend, villagers of Flores gave the Ibegogo a gift of palm fibers to make clothes. So what about the connection between Ibegogo and Homo floresiensis? New evidence and a revised dating has made the connection increasingly implausible, especially a revision of the dating that moved Floresiensis' disappearance to almost 50,000 years ago, about the same time as modern humans arrived at the islands. Still, as we know, archaeological finds are just glimpses into the past. So there is probably much more to this story than we know, hidden somewhere in the innumerable caves of the Indonesian islands.